Okay, today we're going to do a video about the different styles that you can do on a single building. So I got the idea from this from another YouTube user and I'll put her link in the comments. Um, it is in Japanese but the visuals are still really handy. And this is going to be the first part so we're not going to do all this nice decoration and these interiors in this video. That'll be in the second part that'll be a bit longer because it does take more time. Um, we're just going to focus now on building the actual base building. So generally I like to start with the idea of having a two wide door. I won't always but it's a good start and for this we're just going to go a two wide door and four on either side and so sometimes the easiest way is to just pop a couple of blocks down so that you know it's even on either side. And just so this isn't perfectly square and to make it a little bit different, we're going to go six down on either side and then we're just going to add uh, three or four blocks down the left hand side so that we have a kind of like a very fat L shape. Um, doing sort of all different shaped letters is a great way to do varied buildings, so P's, L's, uh, that kind of thing. It just helps you create not completely square buildings. And so the first one we're going to do is a smithy. So we're going to focus on four sort of more, I wouldn't, I don't know sure if serious is the right word, but um, some of the more serious styles. So we're going to use more of the darker and sort of scarier monster based stuff. Um, but for the smithy, we're going to go more with just a traditional plane style. So we're going to use uh, iron blocks for the pillars and the timbered uh, infinite blocks for the walls. And the good thing about that is because those timbered pieces are three really different styles you can mix and match them really nicely because they do all actually kind of infinitely stack um, in any order really well which not all types of infinite blocks do. So this is a good start you can already sort of get an idea of what it's going to be and using those bottom pieces again on the top just as little decorations on the side help create a little bit of variation. Um, so for this version what we're going to do is put some castle windows on the right hand side with a blue awning and I've decided for this one we're going to use the fancy roof, not dyed because um, I don't use that blue roof very often so we'll give that a go. And just for a little bit more variation as well we'll use the slime grate and because it is the same wood type as the timbered wall it fits in really well. Uh, same with the glass door, um, because it's all the same colour and type of wood, it helps it all look like one type of building. And so now that we've got that basic shape done, we will put a roof on. So I'm just using some chalk blocks to mark it out because we won't see it. And they're dark, so on the inside it won't be too noticeable. So we're going to go around and do a two level wrap around roof. So we'll just go ahead and do one on the outside of the block and one on top. And then what we're going to do is just for a base, we're going to fill in that whole level with any kind of block really. Again, you won't see it. And just that little back area that isn't part of the square, we've just gone around and done another layer of roof and a set of blocks just so it's its own little separate roof cap. And to start adding a little bit of interesting detail, we're going to put in some windows at the front. And then we're going to look at chipping out the section that we're going to be putting our fancy shop decorations in. So this kind of roof won't always work for houses because it won't make as much sense to have that big design on the roof. But for shops, you can really play around with lots of different items and have like lots of different designs in there. It'd be great to have, you know, the marine monument for an aquarium, things like that. So we're going to be using magnetic blocks a bit for this as well um, because the great thing is they are camouflageable and so they'll only take up one space even if the item usually takes up a lot of space and that way we can have a lot of interesting effects. We can have fire and steam and sort of stack objects on top of each other. So it makes it a little bit more fun and especially for shops it makes the theme sort of suit. 
Now we're going to use a similar style to what I done for the Pokemon Center uh, roof with the cap and similar to what some of the Mediterranean buildings um, I'm doing you can see in the background are. So we're pretty much just doing a curve with corner with roof pieces under the diagonal bits and wrapping around the back of that cap so that it looks integrated. So from here you can do a few different types of sort of cap on top of there for the roof. You can just do the flat tiling. Um, you could also use the sort of top crenulation pieces on the sides um, and I recommend for this going along and putting those corner roof pieces on either side of a roof like that especially with the windows and that way it just makes the it doesn't make it look perfectly round but it at least gives it um, almost the idea of an underneath curve which is something obviously we would all love in this game and we're never gonna have And so really now I'm just showing you that there are a few different ways to have those side bits of the roof and the same with the top. Um, you could put in like you saw some window pieces to create extra decoration but also your classic top pieces or flat pieces depending on what look you're going for and if you're using pointed pieces on the sides as well and how busy you want it to be. So now that we've got a pretty solid design we can start making it look a little bit more like a smithy. So we'll go ahead, um, like you saw at the very start, and make this a lot more fancy after we've placed all four. But that is going to be the general design for the smithy. Um, and for each of them, we're just going to go ahead and put a little front garden. This will all be changed as well, but we're just trying to make a nice sort of area at the front that we can have additional decorations that show what kind of shop it is. So for the wizard's workstation, we're going to change it to use the infinite wooden columns for the decorations and for the main parts are dyed black wooden floor. And we've actually kept the timbered uh, block from the first build in as a nice decoration. Um, it just adds a little bit of variance. And this time we've gone with two windows and we've gone with the nice decorated windows to make it a little bit more interesting. And now we'll go ahead and we're not really going to change the roof too much for now. We're just going to swap it over to a purple tile. And so for the third one we're going to do the summoning chamber and we're going to swap over to the Teague tiling roof. Um, and we're going to use the castle tile, but we're going to use the bottom pieces of the infinite stack as the decoration because they've got a lot of nice different colored stripes on them. So we're going to use that for all of the pillars. You can use your sifter to get those. Um, and we're going to fill it across the top as well just to make it a little nicer. And um, I've left the windowed parts at the back just because it is going to be too noisy if we leave them at the front, but they add a little bit of decoration around the sides. And so we'll just swap all of this over. Like I said, it doesn't matter too much um, unless you've got buildings higher than this, what those tiles are. They don't have to be dyed like mine are, but I know that my shops are going to be in a level where you probably will be able to see the tops of the roofs. So I've just sort of kept in mind that I will at some point need to be able to have that like nice looking without it sort of looking... I wouldn't want to put anything too decorative on it to cover the top. I just want to make sure that it looks even from the top and interesting from the bottom essentially and so we've gone ahead and changed all of that tiling to the bottom castle pieces and once we diagonally chisel that it still has quite a nice effect and i've decided because it's a summoning chamber i'm going to use a big sort of dramatic door so we're going to use the one with the skull on it and put it just to one side so again it's just little things like putting the door to one side or the window to one side is going to make the four buildings look very different in the end and so for the top decoration there, we're just going to do the serpent fountain and some blue flame. Again, that way it keeps it a little bit more simple, but still has a dramatic effect. And for the window for this one, we're going to use the cell walls. I do want all of the buildings to have a nice viewing area into the interior because we're going to put a lot of work into them. We want to make it look nice and dynamic. 
Uh, so we're not going to do too much more on the outside of this one. Um, we just added that little bit of a black awning. So as I've been going along, before I've been swapping each of these styles, I have been blueprinting these over to a nearby area because we're going to go back in the next video and make them really nice and fancy, put interiors in them, and they're going to be actually the entranceway to our new town, Sandy Highlands, I've decided is what it's going to be called because we're going to use that bottom half of Cerulean Step. So now we're going to do the Creepy Conservatory. This ends up being one of my favorites. So we go back and we're gonna use the Terracotta Roof in yellow. And I've swapped over to bark for the main wall and uh, brick for the outside. It's a bit of a sickly color combination, but that was what I was going for because it's the Creepy Conservatory. We don't want it, we want it to be bright, but we don't want it to be too nice. So I also went and dyed black some of those wooden wall windows um, and put them along the front. Um, we will along the rest of the sides just use the wooden fencing and we'll use that for the big window at the front as well. But here we can see that it is coming along so this is where I've been blueprinting them all down to and we can pop them all in. Now this only took me a couple of hours in the day, obviously I've been working a lot so it might take you a bit longer but it's actually not as big of a project as it looks like um, and I came back the next day and it took me a good time to do all the interiors um, but it's it's something that we can talk about in the second video it's it's not too hard it's just about thinking about the themes um, so that was really more than anything just supposed to be a quick visual explanation of how you can turn four buildings that are the same into very different types of buildings. So walking around now, just remember, we made all of this just from the one building. And so that's it. I'll try and put uh, the second one up at the same time. It'll just take a little while to upload. Uh, but if you have any questions and you want to see anything else, just let me know.